Bob's in the process right now of establishing some bridges. Teaching the bell. We've got to be able to get a generation from one side over into the next. With passion. There is power. Power. Power here today. And purpose. I just had to make up my mind a long time ago that I'm going to do this come hell or high water. Power for living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. One of you will turn in your Bibles, Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. As we are teaching in a series entitled Conquering What's King, this is part three of Joshua chapter 10. We recall that this is the only place in Scripture where God caused time to stand still. Isn't it amazing that when something is standing in the way threatening the possibility of your destiny coming to pass, that God will stop time to give you time to allow you to defeat enemies that are coming against your life. And there are various things that God has in store for you to possess, but you have to first at times dispossess things. Uh, it, this is the law of displacement where if something is already occupying a space, if you're going to get uh, this thing from God, you have to make room for it. You have to make room for it. God will fill uh, the space that people make room for in their life. When you make room for something in your life, it is the greatest demonstration of your faith that you believe that something greater is coming. And so we trust him for that. We, we believe him for that. And, and so we notice the word of the Lord here, Joshua chapter 10 in our foundational text here. Now it came to pass that when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and its king, and so he had done to Ai and its king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them. That they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city, like one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai, and all its men were mighty. Therefore Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent Hoam, king of Hebron, Piram, king of Jarmuth, Japhia, king of Lachish, and Deborah, king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me and help me that we may attack Gibeon, for it has made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. And therefore five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of, of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered together and went up, they and all their armies, and camped before Gibeon and made war against it. Made war against it. God let the sun stand still to give the children of Israel light to be able to win the war. As long as you have sufficient light, you can win your war. Light represents understanding. When you come into an age of enlightenment, as long as you can understand the nature of the war that you're dealing with, you can have victory. We get frustrated when we lose sight of God's understanding in that situation and that's what messes us up but without conquering these kings five of them banded together as allies and I want you to know today it is a fight to even stay in the faith that's why the Bible says fight the good fight of faith and that ought to let you know that not everything is going to go your way so you just need to plant your feet in the ground and realize, listen, I am here to stay. I'm here for a challenge. I'm willing to fight for this thing. People can call me old-fashioned, narrow-minded, and all of these other kinds of things. But when you stand up for truth, you're going to offend some folks. And demonic forces will come against you from every direction. But God will honor those who will stand for him. And if you will not deny him before men, Neither will Jesus deny you before his Father in heaven. And so we thank God for that wonderful privilege of having him to represent us before the Father. And so we dare not deny him here in the earth. But without conquering the kings of, of your enemy that, that, that are occupying the places that God has promised to you, you'll never be able to enter your promised land. Because God always prepares a place for those who love him. Remember here that heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. 
Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. You don't get what you want in life, you get what you prepare for. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. As you prepare yourself, God is already preparing a place. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may be also. But we have to prepare ourselves to meet our maker, don't we? Because heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And you see, little faith can get you to heaven. Just the faith of a grain of a mustard seed. Little faith will get you to heaven, but great faith gets heaven to you. When you really need heaven to come down to where you are, when you need heaven to visit your home, when your home is unheavenly because you've got carnality in your home and you're battling with spirits and flesh and demons trying to uproot you and to rob you of your joy, you need to be able to get a little bit of heaven to come down and to bless you in your bedroom, in your kitchen, in your den, while you're looking at television. You need heaven to come down and to visit you. It takes great faith to be able to move heaven to get heaven to come to earth. And I am convinced in my heart that the more heaven that we can get to earth, the more earth we'll be able to get to heaven. That's why we have to pull the things down in that heavenly realm and make the manifestation of it show up down here the more glory that will show up down here the more we'll be able to get people to heaven I'm not just about getting a manifestation of the Shekinah glory to come up in the in the manifestation of a cloud if a cloud comes you better rest uh, assured that there are some spiritual things that are happening in the midst of that and that God is transforming the nature and the character of individuals that there ought to be a residue of something that happens by his the manifestation of his supernatural presence that changes your natural if the supernatural does not change the natural, it wasn't super. And so when God comes down, something is getting ready to go up. Let me just say this to you, that you must always experience hardship when God is in the process of promoting you. You must always experience hardship when God is in the process of promoting you. You don't get promoted without a test. So there's some hardship that you go through. So you must prepare for the next level while you're still on the level where you are. You gotta start preparing for the next level while you're still on the level where you are. And realize that your problem is your stairway to your promotion. Your problem is your stairway to your promotion. God doesn't want his children to be in the promised land with an Egypt mentality. So when people tell you that you've changed, don't get offended. Tell them thank you. Tell them thank you. People are like, you know, have you ever been in a position and folks haven't seen you in a while and then say, oh, oh, she, you done changed. She done changed. Tell them thank you. The indictment is to be the same today as you were, thinking that you're the same. Wouldn't it be a mess if you were making the same amount of money now as you were making 20 years ago? And you're telling somebody that you're the same? No, you have backslidden. You've gone down. You've lost ground. You didn't stay the same. To stay the same is to get left behind. It is to decrease. It's to deteriorate. And so they haven't paid you a, a great compliment at all. So when people tell you that you've changed, tell them thank you. Tell them thank you. Just, 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 just thank them. Thank them for recognizing the change. You want to grow. You want to progress in life. God built you for growth. You were designed, engineered for excellence. You really were. There ought to be measurable progress in reasonable time measurable progress in reasonable time and if somebody had not seen you in a long time and they don't recognize any change in you you need to stop doing what you're doing and try something else may I just tell you this because I've seen some people you know revert in where they are in life unless your mind has a clear picture of the future you will replay the past let me say that again to you unless your mind has a clear picture of the future you will replay the past and I know people who are stuck in a past existence of an Egypt type mentality there is a reason that everybody who was in Egypt 
died in the wilderness with the exception of Joshua and Caleb they were the only two people among that entire generation including Moses and Aaron including Moses and Aaron who could not enter into the promised land and the reason that Joshua and Caleb did and could is because the Bible says they had a different spirit in them they did not have the Egypt mindset when Caleb got to be 85 years old Caleb said give me my mountain he said I, I'm ready to live now come on bring it on I'm not I'm not looking for a, a, a rocking chair on a nursing home you know he's like I'm ready to live now it's time to bring it on you know why because he had had a future uh, a, a picture of his future a clear picture of his future so that he wasn't replaying the past those children of Israel were slain because they provoked God by saying we remember the garlic and the leeks and the melons and all of this wonderful stuff that we had back in Egypt they were the appetites of their flesh that they were going back to Egypt the type of the world to feed their flesh it's the dog returning to his vomit and it made God sick and God says you are not even qualified to go as I said you're gonna go through some hardship and some tests before God can promote you you don't just get into your promised land still living like you were on the level down here you got to act the way that you want to be and then you'll be the way you act God will take you to a brand new level in your life and it'll change you in an incredible incredible way and so we just thank God for the revelation of his word now I want you to notice this third king here that we encounter is a king by the name of Pyram Pyram means wild you have to read that yourself because I don't use that kind of language I'd call it a wild donkey it, it also means swift it means fast but that's what Pyram means uh, a wild donkey you, you you see the other word you 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 just see that but that's what Pyram is some of you all have met Pyram some of you were Pyram and, and notice now he is the king of Jarmuth Jarmuth means elevation 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 now what this really speaks of this this is a wild donkey now that comes to a place of elevation this means a high-mindedness and pride this means high-mindedness and pride so in other words you've got to conquer that nature in our minds that makes us want to rebel and do our own thing because we're acting like a wild donkey see if you don't deal effectively with your pyram then you'll reach places that you won't be able to stay did you ever notice the word wild the word wild is the root of wilderness wilderness wild is the root of wilderness wild things belong in the wilderness and they are kept there and as long as you're in the wilderness you cannot reach your promised land see when you're wild you belong in the wilderness when you've been tamed domesticated refined then God says now you qualify for the promised land and so the thing that makes most people go wild is the thought that they are missing out on some fun so they want to go wild because they think that somebody's keeping them something uh, keeping them away from something that's fun in their life but what they fail to realize is that the torment of the temptation to sin is nothing to compare with the torment of the consequences of sin yes it is torment to be tempted to sin but it's worse torment to deal with the consequences of sin when girls after the fact are standing there looking the next morning wondering oh god I wonder if I'm pregnant the torment of the consequences of sin see the night before they were burning like oh he sure is fine he can get anything he want from me whatever he wanted and then the next day see they were tormented with the temptation of the torment to sin the night before but the morning after they are dealing with the torment of the consequences of sin I wonder did he have anything I wonder did she have anything <laughs> and now they're dealing with the torment of the consequences of sin 
And the thing about it is that whenever the devil tempts us to sin, he never shows us the consequences. If he ever tempts a person to use drugs, he never shows their teeth falling out. Never shows you, you know, getting all skinny, you know, on that crack diet. I mean, he just he, he doesn't show you the consequences of sin. He only shows you the person just having a good time, being all mellowed out, chill out. <laughs> he shows you the fun, but he doesn't show you the consequences. And so just remember, the next time that the devil comes with temptation, ask him, what are the consequences of this? Take your pen out and start writing them down. The consequences of the torment of sin. The consequences. See, there's a torment that is built into that. But you know that there are too many people who have severely damaged their destiny by being a wild donkey. You know the word you ought to use. <laughs> Simply trying to get to an elevated place too rapidly. And they have oftentimes disqualified themselves from their destiny because of their wildness. And if you are elevated too quickly before the humility of character has been developed in you to sustain you in that place, uh, you'll be brought down very quickly. You see, a wild donkey does not think about the consequences of his actions, of her action. A wild donkey doesn't realize that the longest distance to a destination is a shortcut. So they think that if I can make a shortcut, take a shortcut this way, I can have the time. It doesn't quite work that way. I recently uh, read a sign at a restaurant. Here's what it said. Hire a teenager while they still know everything. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? hire a teenager while they still know everything. That's called being sophomoric. A sophomore is a wise fool. Literally, that's what the word means, sophomore, wise fools. It, it means that they know a little of something and a whole lot of nothing. So they're wise in some areas and they're, they're just a, and, a, and a fool in so many other areas. So it said hire a teenager while they still know everything. It's amazing. But you know, most of these wild donkeys, they live with regret and remorse. And you know why? It's because their unbridled actions have left them with criminal records, disease, unwanted pregnancies, delinquent bills, broken relationships, and the list goes on. But here I want you to notice uh, Webster's definition of wild, and then I want to show you a spiritual parallel to them. Number one, the first definition here of wild that he has is living in a state of nature and not ordinarily tame or domesticated. And so the spiritual parallel to that is that you are ruled by your carnal nature. You're ruled by your carnal nature. Here's the next one. Number two, second definition of wild, growing or produced without the aid and care of man just like wild honey. It, it's produced without the aid of man. It's, it's wild. Here's a spiritual parallel. Is a person who is unsubmitted or uncovered with no accountability. Wild. Wild. An unsubmitted person. Wild. Won't listen to the mama. Already been there, done that. Have already made the mistakes, got the t-shirt. And there they are. The very thing that was your mistake is now talking to you, telling you that what you don't know. And they are the proof that you do know that you've been there and done that. Here's the third definition of wild. Not inhabited or cultivated. Not inhabited or cultivated. Something is out in the wild. It's not inhabited. It's not cultivated. Here's the spiritual parallel. Devoid of the spirit or the word of God. Devoid of the spirit or the word of God. You remember in the beginning, the earth was with, it was void and it was without form. See, everything was wild at that time. Number four, 
fourth definition of wild means uncontrolled. There are some people that just absolutely refuse to be controlled. They are unbridled. They don't want to be under anybody's authority. They're uncontrolled. And so the spiritual parallel for that is undisciplined. 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 You have to be able to control yourself. It's called self-control or temperance. Temperance. He's trying to help a person to stop from doing things. You've got to have control with God to be ready to stop at a moment's notice because you're submitted to him. I mean, what do you think would have happened had Abraham not been submitted to God and he had drawn the, the dagger ready to kill his own son and in mid-stroke God says, Abraham, Abraham. But he knew that Abraham was so submitted to him that he would stop at a moment's notice. There are some times when you are in a battle, you don't have time to stop and explain to the folks that you're trying to help protect, listen baby, get your things, let's get out of here. And they don't even understand the danger that is imminent. They don't, Mama, where we got to go? What's the hurry? What, yeah. They need to be able to trust them. You're in the military when you are under command. You don't have time to be saying, well, what, what, I mean, it's 3.30 in the morning. What's, your, what's, your, what's all the fuss about? What, what, I mean, why we got to go right now? There might be imminent danger that you don't know anything about and they don't have time to explain it to you. The place might be on fire. Another part of it might have been bombed. You don't know what's going on. You've got to be able to trust that person under whom you are submitted, that they are looking out for your best interest, and you've got to be able to move without questioning that authority. When you are in a crisis situation, you don't have time to have a discussion about it. it baby, you've got to get out, and you've got to get out now. And sometimes you don't have time to go through therapy and convince the person you just have to trust me on this one. Listen, the house is on fire. You are in a dangerous position right now, and you've got to get out. There are times that God will put an urgency down in your spirit that you cannot explain. It's like, baby, I can't explain it. But if you don't get out of this relationship right now, you're going to live with deep regret in your life. Something awful is about to happen. I've already sensed it in my spirit. God has given... Does anybody know what I'm talking about? God will give you discernment about people that you love and that that you care about and sometimes you'll just contact them and there is an urgency for you to give a certain message to them that you've got to do this and if you don't here are going to be the consequences there's an urgency but see wild folks will be undisciplined and they won't listen they won't listen it's hard to help wild folks number five wild emotionally overcome emotionally overcome here's the spiritual parallel is a person that's ruled by their emotions it's a person that is ruled by their emotions and see the problem with that is that you cannot educate your emotions it's impossible to educate emotions emotions just feel what they feel I mean uh, you can know in your mind uh, that I know that he's not good for me I understand he just got out of jail and he's still on dope. But honey, the way that man touched me, honey, something went all over me. Listen, your flesh, see, your flesh doesn't know anything. It's not going to even deal with all of that. It's not going to deal with their circumstances, their background, and the demons that they're dealing with. All your flesh knows is that you have been touched, and that man, I just, I'm telling you, just the way, the way he just talk. And your flesh is not considering anything else. See, when you're totally ruled by your flesh, you're going to be fooled so many times and you are about to go on an emotional roller coaster because emotions are very fickle. They are constantly changing. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Until next time, God bless you.